The last mix we're going to talk about today is uh, one that I thought would be really fun to kind of see in the field and, and kind of really uh, press the limits on, on where you could see the benefit from these high diversity mixes. And that's what this one is called. It's called a summer high diversity mix. Um, and I think that we counted over 44 species uh, in this field. Um, this is one, I'll, I'll go ahead and start off by saying it is also very expensive, very similar to the pollinator mix. We uh, only planted this at 25 pounds to the acre, but at that we're looking at about 60 to $65 per acre. So still a really high amount, and it doesn't have some of those things like the decorative gourds, like the marigolds. So we aren't going to see that niche benefit of pollinators. This is typically just taking all the components basically that we've seen in most of our other normal type uh, cover crop mixes and throwing them all together into one. So we do see that a majority of this still looks like that soil builder mix. So we still can see the benefits of that soil builder mix, high amount of carbon with the sorghum, sorghum sedans. We even have some forage corn in here um, and, and various other grass species. Um, we do have the sunflowers at a pretty high uh, rate in here, as well as the sun hemp. But then, uh, as well as uh, some of these legumes like the uh, cow peas and the mung beans, soybeans. But we also have a sub canopy that includes things like mustards and a lot of clover species. So, um, one of those things that whenever you start adding in things like mustards, like clovers, like radishes, and then you already have a pretty high amount of things like sun, uh, sunflowers and sun hemp, um, in addition to the grasses, we're, we're just thinking of really high dollar. Additionally, whenever you look at the bulk majority of this cover crop, a majority of it is going to be very similar to either the spring or the summer release or the summer um, the summer soil builder mix in that you're not going to often see the benefits of some of these things. This is also the, the mix that we had things like flax and chickpeas. But in going through here and just having a, a very quick glance over this, we often would find like one flax plant every so often. And I, I think we overall only found a couple of chickpea plants. So while you're paying for having flax and you're paying for having chickpea in there, um, more often than not, especially in Oklahoma systems, you're just not going to see it. The other thing that we had in here is small grains. We had a lot of oats and rye in here, and we didn't really see that come through. Um, once again, because we talk about uh, potentially spring or summer planting of this mix, and when it's hot and the soil temperatures were well into the 90s, we often aren't going to see those small grains kind of come up. If you're a little bit cooler in the summer, so think about the northern Great Plains, Midwest, and the Northeast, where their highs are in the 80s, you potentially could see like a spring oats or a spring bar come through on something like this. But in Oklahoma, a majority of the time, we, we probably aren't going to see those components even make it out of the ground during a late summer planting. So I, I guess the overall conclusion I got from this is that you can get very similar things with two of our other mixes we've already looked at today in the soil builder and the summer release you're just paying a lot more for it. And you have some of these very unique things that are out here, but they're in such small quantities, you probably aren't gonna get an economic return for having chickpeas out here, or even, even the clovers, which are actually uh, in, in the amount of seed pretty high rate. So one of those things, be cautious when you look at these high diversity mixes, because more often than not, we're gonna see the benefit of maybe five to 10 plants out there. And, and remember your goals, you're looking for one, primary goal and maybe a secondary goal. And even with these 37 way mixes, 40 way mixes, you probably aren't even gonna be able to stretch to those tertiary or those fourth order goals. So make sure that we're covering the bases on the primary goal and the secondary goal without just outspending ourselves because even running cattle through the system with the amount of good forage potential that's out here, you're probably still not gonna bank up for that, that 60 or so dollars per acre um, return. So really be cautious. Uh, take a good look at, at what um, some of these things uh, are in this mix. I, I really highly encourage uh, individuals come out to our, our cover crop field days, look at what, what looks good in the field, and then build a mix off of that that's going to look good. So you want to have good coverage, good soil health, get one of those sorghum sedans and maybe add something like a sunflower or sun hemp onto it and keep it relatively simple, especially that first year or two. That way you can really achieve those goals that you set forth.